Last time on Dragon Ball Z, despite its best efforts, even Son Goku with his immense power increase was no match for the galactic tyrant Frieza. Desperate and with one last ace in the hole, Goku brutally endured Frieza's attacks while he readied the ultimate technique he learned from Kyosama, the spirit bomb. In the final hour and with support from his friends, Goku launched a Genkidama at Frieza and landed a direct hit. As the warriors gathered together to celebrate their hard fought victory, this reunion was short lived after a horrified Krillin looked up at the horizon and saw none other than Frieza injured but very much alive. The terror landed a fatal blow on Piccolo, but Krillin was not so lucky. Frieza, basking in the desperate pleas of Goku, cruelly launched Krillin in the air and ended his life right in front of his lifelong friend. Goku, now at his lowest point in his life and the tragic end of his best friend still fresh in his mind, reaches his breaking point, allowing him to overcome the limit of his strength and transform into the warrior of legend that Vegeta so often pined about the Super Saiyan. After witnessing Goku's transformation, both Gohan and Frieza are staring at the man mouth wide open like that surprise Patrick meme. Goku breaks the silence, demanding that Gohan take Piccolo, who he senses is still just barely alive, and use his ship to return to Earth while he handles business. Gohan protests, telling his daddy he won't leave him alone to fight Frieza. Goku grows visibly frustrated with Gohan, telling him that he better grab that green man and take a hike while he still has some sanity left, because he's just as liable to put him on a milk carton as Frieza at this point with the way his emotions are out of control. Goku tells his son that he will find a way back home. A terrified Gohan asks him how, and Goku ends up summoning his inner Sam Jackson and is like, say what again? I don't know, I triple dog dare you. Sensing that he was seconds away from an everybody hates Chris level ass whooping, he decides that right now it would be best to mind his father and begins floating away with Piccolo as ordered. Frieza peeps all of this and sees Gohan trying to make a getaway with the last remaining Namekian and decides that he wants to go for a clean sweep and takes his aim at them as they try to make their way to Goku's ship. Now, Flash, Frieza's view is blocked by Goku, who completely suns this man, grabbing his hand and moving it aside like it's a wrestling promo before Frieza backs away for some distance. Before Frieza is able to even finish wondering where this power came from, Goku is already completely stanced up and declares to every remaining living thing on Namek that Frieza's cooked before immediately dashing towards him, booming him with the most disrespectful hook to the face Frieza has ever taken in his life, and double axe handling this man into the dirt for the finishing touch. Hitting his best Luffy impersonation, Frieza emerges from the rubble, looking as though he's seen better days if I'ma keep it a buck, and tells Goku for all the heat he's been spitting, Saiyans weren't exactly the most moral people either, and if he's really gonna sit there and try to dog him for all the stuff that he's done. Goku explains that the Saiyans have already paid the price for their wrongdoing, and now it's Frieza's turn to make a donation. Frieza tells Goku he couldn't take him out no matter what kind of garbage transformation he goes through and hits a classic we haven't seen in a minute, the continuous energy wave volley. This right here is exactly why we know this fight is not about to go this man's way. The minute you hit this move, your chances of taking an L go up at least 70% and Frieza's no exception. As we come to expect, Goku emerges from the volley unscathed, then puts a single hand up and knocks Frieza below him with only the force of his ki eye, then shoots Buddy a little smile like, yeah, you like that one, huh? Goku then goes back on the offensive, doing his best Metal World Peace impersonation and elbowing Frieza in the face, then for the most random attack of all, pays Frieza back by headbutton dude square in his spinal column. At this point, Frieza is getting so pissed and throws everything he can just to land a single hit on this man. Sensing Frieza's frustration, Goku decides he's in the mood to add a little extra fuel to the fire. This dude then stops dodging and stands still and tells Frieza to hit him. Y'all don't even understand how funny disrespect mode Goku is to me. When dude starts feeling himself, you truly never know what kind of nonsense he's gonna pull up on his opponent with. Whether it's putting his dirty ass Tim straight on your dome piece like he did with Nappa, leaving you and your thing tooted up in the air like he did with Raccoon, or playing with his food and talking crazy trash the whole time like with this man Frieza, you just never know what this dude is gonna be cooking when he gets in that mode and I'm here for it all day every day. At this point, Frieza is damn near frothing at the mouth with anger but takes this monkey up on his offer and shoots a beam right between Kakarot's eyes. The hit lands and Goku gets on his Jason Voorhees timing, cranking his head back into position mad slow, only to look Frieza directly in his eyes to say, wow, the all-powerful galactic emperor who can take out whole planet with his fingertips is having trouble with a single lowly Saiyan monkey. At this point, all Frieza can do is look at Goku and ask him, what the hell is he? Because he is completely different from any Saiyan monkeys come across. And this is when Goku reads off his resume with his whole chest, letting him know that he is a pure hearted warrior of legend son Goku the Super Saiyan, and he's here to collect the check that Frieza's ass couldn't cash. Frieza then has a full blown internal and external meltdown with his brain literally unable to grasp the concept of him taking an L. 
As Frieza tries to come to grips with his current reality, Goku is standing in front of him waiting to erase it. Goku bluntly tells Frieza that this fight is over and prepares Kamehameha to wrap this thing up and return to his friends. Frieza, unable to accept defeat, pulls a classic that I'm sure you're all familiar with. Y'all ever play a game with a little kid, you start beating them, and then instead of just holding the L, they throw all the cards on the floor and flip the whole damn table? Well, that's exactly what Frieza did here. Sensing that his karmic fade was approaching, the man decides that if I can't defeat the dude directly, then I'll win by technicality and shoots a ball of energy directly at Namek's core. Everyone thought it was a wrap, including King Kai, who was watching on pay-per-view. But after the smoke cleared, the planet was unstable, but still intact, leaving Goku and the remaining Z homies one last chance to escape before things go totally sideways. Realizing that the planet had instantly been demolished, Frieza curses at himself for holding back too much on his table flip gambit. Frieza then decides that since they have about 5 minutes left to play together, he'll bite the bullet and show Goku his full power so they can have a definitive end to their little back and forth. Frieza musters up a burst of energy and sends Goku flying across the planet in an effort to buy time. Despite it being only a short while that he was gone, the plan seems to have worked as Frieza states that he's now ready to show Goku what he can do at 100% and starts to transform. Goku peeps this and knows for a fact that the most intelligent thing he could do right now would be to clap Frieza while he's continuing to gather the remaining energy he needs for the transformation. But something inside won't let him end things this way, so instead, he watches. Watches in pure-hearted curiosity and excitement as his hated adversary prepares to go sicko mode on him so they can get this rumble on Planet Namek concluded once and for all. King Kai peeps Goku admiring the scenery while Frieza is key charging and rings his pupil up for a quick zoom session. At first, Goku blatantly ignores him, but King Kai is nothing if not persistent, and Goku eventually acknowledges his master's presence and says what's up. King Kai starts the conversation off calm and is like, so I couldn't help but notice, young blood, that you're just standing there watching the enemy of the universe gathers yeah, energy when you are fully capable of ending the fight right at this exact moment, and I was hoping you might be able to tell me why. Goku replies simply, stating that he doesn't exactly know what it is, but he got that dog in him and the idea of fighting the strongest known entity in the universe at his max capacity really powders his donut. King Kai does his best to remain respectful, but he can't hold back any longer and asks Goku if he has finally lost his ever-loving monkey mind. King Kai reminds Goku how he watched his friends and family get served up something crazy by this man Frieza, and if he is allowed to continue unchecked, there's not a single planet out here that's safe from a colon cleansing. Goku tells King Kai that he understands the stakes, but reminds him that he is objectively built different. Goku promises that he's going to soul steal Frieza and pour one out for his homie Krillin right after. So just go play Uno with Bubbles and the C team while Papa puts another notch on his belt. Kyle Sama realizes that trying to talk to Sun right now is bad for his health. So he deads the connection and starts talking to Kami and lets him know that he has one last big brain play to try with the Dragon Balls. King Kai tells Kami to immediately wish for all those murked by Frieza to come back to life. And if everything goes correctly, this will bring back the Namekians, including the Great Elder, even if it is just for a short time, since his life was shortened from its normal span due to the arrival of Frieza. This would allow them to use their final Namekian wish to transport everyone else remaining on Namek off the planet and away from Frieza so he can eat the planet explosion by his lonely. After Kami tells King Kai this is why they pay him the big bucks, we return to Goku who was eating a stomach churning gut shot by Frieza and getting pieced up something nice following that man's 100% full power transformation. One thing that gets me so hype about this fight in this section in particular is how visceral the hits feel. Bruh, every punch these two land sounds like a Civil War era cannon being fired off. Every hit just feels so brutal and like these two genuinely hate each other. I hate so much about the things that you choose to be. Two moments I gotta point out. One is a legendary pimp hand moment from Goku in this fight. While they're scrapping, man's like Goku jumps in the air and delivers an elbow from the top rope directly on Frieza's medulla oblongata. Then while this man's trying to recalibrate, Goku takes his hand and starts open palms slapping this man repeatedly. Whole time King Kai's on the phone gassing him up and having the time of his life. Another particular favorite of mine is where Goku grabs both of Frieza's arms and delivers a nasty headbutt the dude with the back of his cranium, then goes for a replay of what he did earlier before the spirit bomb and chucks the man in the air on some Super Mario 64 timing yet again. I promise you, this man Goku want to be an Italian plumber so bad. The throw had a purpose though, because with the newly gained distance he has, Goku begins charging a command mail wave, while Frieza launches himself directly downward at him in his best Clark Kent impression, trying to hit stick buddy in the Namek's magma. 
While Frieza is on Namek wishing for a W, Popo is on Earth making his wish as well, summoning the dragon and requesting that it bring back all those lost in Frieza's tirade on Namek. We cut back to Namek to see the Namekians emerging from what's left of their homes and one part disbelief that they're alive again and another part wondering if they got brought back just to die again after peeping the earthquakes and the storms that are currently raging on the planet. We then return to Goku and Frieza in the middle of their heated clash. The two sides collide, each giving their all, but eventually Frieza manages to brute force his way out of Goku's blast and hits him with a nasty hit that leaves Goku submerged and MIA. This section is actually kind of controversial amongst fans because some believe that Goku actually died here and was revived by the wish from the Dragon Balls, giving him a Zenkai boost that lets him level the playing field against Frieza. Others believe that Goku was fine the entire time and just took a while to recover from the attack before returning to the fight. Y'all let me know what you think, because I'm actually not 100% sure when it comes to this part. Continuing on though, Goku reveals that he has been listening in on Kaiosama's plan this entire time and tells him to adjust the wish, leaving only Frieza and him on Namek and that if he does not listen to this request, he will never forgive him. Deeply concerned and saddened by Goku's choice, King Kai listens and delivers the message to the Elder, who then delivers the message to Dende to transport the remaining Z homies, as well as all those previously taken out by Frieza, back to Earth, with the exception of Goku. With nothing left between them but space and opportunity, Goku and Frieza head into the final stretch of their death match. The two trade blows back and forth, but at this point, it's clear who has the upper hand. With every attack that lands, Goku's dominance becomes clearer, until eventually Goku himself stops and tells Frieza that he quits the fight. Frieza is in utter shock and doesn't understand. Goku boldly tells Frieza that it's clear now that he's superior. Goku remarks that with each hit he lands, he can sense Frieza's key growing weaker and weaker. Goku tells Frieza that his pride has already been shattered and the match is pointless now. He also tells the alien menace that he better never see his face again, unless Frieza wants to get served up that Saiyan 2 piece special again so he better mind his manners. Frieza can barely even open his mouth. Dude in all of his years has never been this disrespected in his life, let alone from a race of people he barely even considers worthy of life. With all the remaining energy he has left, Frieza launches his final offensive, a series of death slicers aimed at Goku that will track him forever until they land. Goku is livid that Frieza did not take the out that he gave him. He powers back up to Super Saiyan and begins artfully dodging Frieza's attacks. Frieza is aware that Goku is likely to turn the attack on him, but even armed with this knowledge, he's unable to stop what's to come. Goku once again takes advantage of Frieza's lack of emotional control and ability to read key by shooting a key blast on the ground that blinds Frieza, leaving him open. Goku then drops an elbow on the top of Frieza's head, and while Frieza's on the ground, Goku warns him to look out, but Frieza registers things too late and is butchered by his own move. I know that this is light work compared to a lot of other series, but the way Frieza gets taken out here is actually low-key super brutal and still surprises me to this day sometimes when I see it. After all this time, it appears that the battle on Namek has finally been won. Goku remarks on Frieza's pathetic end, telling him that even he deserves better than what he's become, but it's due to his own ego that he ended up like this. As Goku prepares to make his way to his ship, he hears a faint voice calling out behind him, a voice pleading for help. Goku stops dead in his tracks and confirms that his ears weren't deceiving him and that it was in fact the evil tyrant Frieza pleading for help in his last moments. Goku tries momentarily, but is unable to contain his rage, asking Frieza what right he has to ask for help after all the crimes he's committed. But Goku, unable to escape the reality of who he is, finds it in his heart to provide Frieza with a small bit of his own energy, enough for him to fly away from the planet to escape, and after doing this, turns his back and says goodbye. Back on Earth, we see the Guru spending his final moments letting his fellow Namekians know how they have returned to life. One of the Namekians points out that there's an entire village missing, and the newly revived Vegeta makes a point of letting them know that their absence must be due to him being the one that took the village out, and that they didn't get revived because he's not one of Frieza's men. Dude was so proud of himself for this too. I promise you I wanted nothing more than to see the entire population of Namek and Piccolo run over to Buddy with the forehead and start stomping him out like what used to happen to dudes backstage in the Attitude Era. The Namekians take the high road though and Elder Guru appoints Mori as the new Elder before his passing, making him the new keeper of the Dragon Balls and tasking him with finding a new planet for the rest of their people where they can live in peace. Before the scene cuts away, Gohan tells Piccolo that the reason his pops isn't there is because he decided to stay on Namek so he could box up Frieza one last time. Piccolo was in the process of calling Goku everything but a son of God, but Gohan tells him to relax. And while Piccolo was almost taking the dirt nap, Goku reached a new peak and became a Super Saiyan. Vegeta heard this all the way across the room and the look on his face was priceless. I know his little tummy was hurting thinking about how he got surpassed by Kakarot while he was six feet under after Frieza took him to Red Lobster. While the Namekians were on Earth thinking of how they can find their peace, we return to Frieza who is now 
resting in pieces. Frieza is in absolute disbelief that this Saiyan of all people, the same man he had terrorized since the moment he met him, whose friends he had taken the lives of, was giving him some of his own energy in order to escape the planet. The complete and utter foolishness of doing something like this leaves Frieza with no choice but to talk his crap, letting this monkey know that he's a dummy beyond belief for what he did just now. Frieza will survive while he explodes on the planet and perishes despite his victory in combat. Goku looks at Frieza directly in the eyes and matter-of-factly tells him that he will not die here and makes his way to Frieza's ship to escape. Frieza has now truly lost, both mentally and physically. But his lack of character and maturity will not allow him to take this loss graciously and move on. Instead, he uses the last of the energy he received to fire off one last beam directly at Goku's back. Goku senses the attack, and with a mix of sadness and rage at what must be done, calls Frieza a fool and shoots a beam that wipes Frieza off the map one last time. Goku gives one last solemn look at the ground where Frieza once stood before making his way over to his ship, praying that he still has enough time to make it out. Goku gets to the ship and is thankful to find that it's fairly similar to his own. A panicked Goku frantically searches for something, anything that will get the ship to move, but he's completely out of luck. And to make a bad day worse, the ground under the ship goes out and the entire thing falls into the unstable core of the soon to be extinct planet Namek. We see one last frame of Goku crying out in agony as his final means of escape was destroyed right before his eyes and the next Next moment, we see the planet Namek erupt, appearing to take the Earth's greatest savior along with it. Kyosama watches the whole thing and informs the C team that Goku won the fight but lost the war and perished along with planet Namek. Yamcha asks if he can be the one to relay the news to everyone and rings up Bulma for the first time and God knows how long so she can deliver the news to Gohan and the rest of Sun's family. First, he lets them know that Frieza is dead, leaving the most heartbreaking part for the second piece. Bulma and all of her tact blurts out immediately that Goku got smoked in the plan's explosion, leaving everyone in disbelief, grieving. Due to there being no plan Namek to wish Krillin and Goku back to, the Z homies feel like all hope is lost to bring back their remaining friends. But an unexpected ally speaks up in the form of Vegeta, who recommends they bring their souls back to life on Earth first, followed by their bodies so they can return to life without fear of an immediate end. A surprised but grateful Gohan goes up to Vegeta to thank him, but the prince is quick to let Kakarot's offspring know that he not do this out of any form of sentimentality. He just wants to see this legendary Super Saiyan transformation for himself so he can get to work on surpassing it. Over the course of a few months, the new elder Mori allows Bulma and the crew to use the Dragon Balls to make their wishes as a show of thanks, bringing back Chaozu and Yamcha, and then Krillin, and finally their boy Goku. Krillin is brought back right before Goku, much to the fanfare of all his friends, but something strange happens when they attempt to bring Goku back. When they ask to bring Sun back to life, the dragon informs them that he cannot bring back to life an individual who is still alive. This is the first bombshell. So instead, assuming that Sun is stuck somewhere and unable to return home, they wish for him to be brought back to Earth. Following this wish, the dragon informs them that Goku has refused this request and has stated that he will return home when ready. Another shock at this, all his friends and family can do now is wait for Goku's arrival. But in the year that passes waiting for Sun's arrival, the peace that has overcome the earth has been abruptly interrupted by a tremendous evil key that the Z homies are now all too familiar with. And here homies marks the end of the legendary Frieza saga and the beginning of a brand new age of both triumphs and losses for our heroes. Hard to believe that the Frieza saga is over gang, I cannot tell you all how much fun I had revisiting this saga with you. These weekend premieres bring me back to my childhood of waiting for the new weekly releases to show on the air and having so many people to chop it up with, laugh and just share our love for the series is a genuine blessing. Appreciate all of you and stay tuned for next time as a familiar threat approaches the horizon that gets met with an unfamiliar ally. Be easy y'all and I'll talk to you in the next video.